Hi there. My name is Harvey Molino, and this is the last in a series of little snapshots of what you might expect in, uh, to see when you attend a John M. Campbell G4 gas conditioning and processing section uh, session. This uh, chapter talks about adsorption. When you attend a G4 course, you will be able to state some types of commercial adsorbents that are used, and we talk predominantly about silica gel, activated alumina, and molecular sieves. Distinguish between typical process flow diagrams. Uh, describe in detail how molecular sieves work you'll be able to demonstrate the relationship between adsorption time and regeneration time, which is, if you're involved with adsorption units, very critical. And you'll be able to evaluate a typical regeneration profile. In today's discussion, we are simply going to focus on a process flow diagram, and I will take you through the major um, steps on a typical process flow diagram. What we have over here is a uh, PFD, uh, simplified PFD of a uh, system that is using um, adsorbents, and we'll talk particularly about molecular sieves to dehydrate a natural gas stream. Molecular sieves are used when you want to get your product gas to very, very low water concentrations, less than a tenth of a part per million by volume, which is often needed if you're feeding a, um, a turbo expander plant or a uh, LNG plant. The gas initially comes into a separator followed by an inlet filter coalescer or filter separator. This is probably the most important part of the entire unit because you really do need to have excellent uh, separation of the liquids and mist from the vapor. The gas will then continue flowing and what it does is it goes down through one vessel that happens to be in its drying stroke. And as the gas comes down, this vessel is filled with um, beads or pellets of molecular sieves. Typically, they are 1 eighth inch in diameter. That's 3.2 millimeters. Or it may be a bead cut that is a 4 by 8 mesh bead. So the gas flows down, and as it flows down, the water is being adsorbed onto the molecular sieves, so that by the time the gas reaches the bottom of the tower, it is bone dry. The reading down here is going to be less than 0.1 part per million by volume. The gas will go through a... Uh, a small filter to collect any dust that may uh, accumulate and then ultimately goes off to the process. While all this is going on and this vessel is in the adsorption stroke, you have this vessel over here which is, needs to be regenerated. It's a key point, a key point that the time that you have for adsorption must, must be greater or equal to the time that you have available to regenerate the tower that's being, uh, going through its regeneration stroke. If you cannot finish the regeneration time, before the water breaks through in the outlet, you have a problem. You will either have to cut your feed gas flow rate down, 
or order a new charge of adsorbent. Let's go back to what the regeneration stroke looks like. What I'm doing over here is this bed, which has, has water that is loaded on it. I need to remove the water. To do that, I'm going to take a clean source of regeneration gas and pass it through a heater. I'll heat it up to somewhere between uh, approximately maybe 300 degrees Celsius, uh, that's about 550, 600 degrees Fahrenheit, and I heat up flow the bed, and as I heat it up, I drive the water off the bed. Following the heat stroke, I bypass the heater, and then I cool the bed down. So looking at a cycle chart, what you end up wanting to do is if you have two towers over here, and we're showing tower two in drying, so tower two is going to be uh, in the adsorption step, and tower one is in the regeneration step, that's where we are in this particular, uh, where, we sh where we are in this diagram. Tower one is regenerating, and tower two is adsorbent. It is critical, that, as I mentioned before, that you finish the regeneration step before you finish the adsorption step, or you could run into trouble. Adsorption is a process that is not normally, uh, we don't normally spend a lot of time in universities. It is not a steady state process, it's a transient process. You're going to get changes in gas composition during the adsorption stroke and changes in your gas composition during the regeneration stroke. When you attend a G4 course, we talk in more detail about how these changes in gas composition may affect your downstream operations. I'd like to thank you for the time that you have taken in, uh, in seeing these videos, and I hope to meet you one day in a G4 class. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining me today. For more information on the courses we offer, please go to jmcampbell.com. We'll see you next time.